portion of this video is sponsored by Bespoke Post. This is a real Minecraft minecart, which I designed and built specifically for the giant miniature train tracks at the Little America Amusement Park. The tracks here are incredibly close in size to the actual tracks in Minecraft, and there are miles of them passing through beautiful and wild scenery. Which is why I had to design a near game-perfect minecart that just might be capable of reaching actual minecart top speed on actual iron wheels. But maybe you've never heard of Minecraft. I mean, you probably, you probably have. But for the sake of those few who haven't, let's all take a moment to try and convey the magic. The moment the loading screen finished on my first world, I finally got why it was so popular. The endless landscapes, adventurous caverns, architectural sandbox, overarching heroic adventure, and all suspended in an ether of haunting melodic melancholy. It was beautiful and difficult all at the same time. I was lost in a sea of possibility and overwhelmed by the sheer scale of it, until I built my first minecart track. Maybe it's because I've always loved trains. Well, not exactly the trains, but the idea of riding down a track. You see, when you're on rails, no matter what you encounter along the way, all you have to do is hold on and enjoy the ride. My first minecart tracks made me feel like I was finally getting a handle on the crazy wilderness of Minecraft. And there were times when I never wanted to leave that little iron box. And that's why I had to try and bring that magic to life. Figuring out the mechanical portion of the minecart was a combination of repurposing materials, careful measurement, and a lot of trial and error. If you want to know more about that part of the build process, I made a separate video detailing the crazy journey, and you should definitely check it out. But once I had the mechanical part tested and solidified the last little details to ensure the wheels wouldn't fall off again, it was finally time to make it look just like a real minecart. The structure of the minecart is a plywood box, but in case you hadn't noticed, the walls of a minecart are quite, uh, thick. Building this entirely out of iron would make it incredibly expensive and heavy. And even using only wood would still be less than ideal. But thankfully, I have a ton of two inch thick foamular boards. This foam was already painted to look like metal because I used leftover pieces from the underground bunker movie set I built for the film Infinitus. So it was sort of like I was mining iron. I had my CNC machine score the outline of the pixels onto the foam so that each pixel would be perfectly square. After cutting them, I cleaned them up and then gave them to my wife to hand paint each pixel to match the picture from the game. The foam gets sandwiched around the wood frame, creating the perfect thickness. With the minecart painted, it was finally time to take it to Little America for our day of testing. But to get it there, I'd need the help of my friend Damien. All right, you ready to see what we're doing today? So you know the game Minecraft? Oh yeah. Oh, those are like legit train track moves. Uh, they're actually brake drums. What? How fast does it go? The max speed in the game is like 25. Does this do 25? I'm gonna try and get it up to 25, but it's a little scary because like, if anything goes wrong, at that speed. Did you bring a helmet? That's what I forgot. The rest of my team assembled on site. We've got my wife Kirsten on camera, my friend Graydon on drone, and of course, Frank. Wait, who's Frank? Frank is just a guy I met on like Craigslist. He was, he was like selling his services, building lithium ion battery packs. And then basically he told me I have this pack and he's like, yeah, you can use it. So we're just borrowing it. We also randomly met a guy who worked there named Trevor, but oh. we'll talk more about him later. It actually has a key. Like a car. Yeah. Mine car. So I got the battery hooked up and got it onto the tracks and lined it up properly. And I couldn't believe the moment was finally here. Now, just like any new vehicle, there are some tips and tricks that make driving the minecart a breeze. So here's what I figured out during the first few minutes on mine. For one, switch tracks are no problem if they're switched in the right direction. Unlike last time. Oh! Number two, minecarts run best when all of your electrical connectors are fully connected. Number three, minecarts don't actually have a speedometer, so if you want to know how fast you're going, it's best to download an app to your phone. Number four, and this is a big one, don't run over sticks. Oh, that was rough. Did we run over a stick? Is that what did that couldn't have done? Does that do this? Oh, and number five, uh, is anyone missing some Tylenol? Hey, look, some Tylenol. So what I've learned is if there's a stick on the tracks, you definitely don't want to go over it. <laughs> on a big train, you know, you can just crush the stick because big trains weigh a lot. But my car only weighs like 300 pounds with me on it, maybe. So we can't really crush everything. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is incredible. After realizing that my minecart actually activated the railroad crossing, it was finally starting to sink in. 
This is gotta be one of the coolest things I've ever done in my life. This is so much fun. I was on a real minecart on real tracks. And not just any tracks, but really cool tracks that were surrounded by incredible scenery. And to think, a few short weeks ago, this was all just an idea in my head. Now that I was starting to get the hang of things, I was ready to link up with my crew so that we could all go discover more of this incredible track together and find a nice long stretch to see if I could hit the top speed. But not before we address some important business. Building a real minecart is not cheap, but thankfully we have a sponsor, Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is a membership club that sends awesome stuff to you every month, like this sweet looking Japanese nada from their slash box. In the winter time, my furnace gets hungry, and a versatile tool like this can help me make kindling to feed it, strip down branches, and of course, be prepared for the occasional zombie. And when I'm ready to leave my base for supplies, this old school weekender bag is the perfect real life inventory bar. I love that 90% of Bespoke's products come from small businesses. Many of them are based in the US, like Barebones, who made the Nada and is based in Salt Lake City. With Bespoke, you'll get around $70 of value for $45 a box. And you only pay for what you want. They base your boxes off of the quiz that you take when signing up, but even before they send it, you get the option to preview what's inside, and then you can either keep it, swap it for something else, or skip the month entirely for no charge. So if your inventory could use some of Bespoke's ever-changing lineup of awesome tools, kits, and even food, and you want 20% off your first box, then click the link in the description below and enter code JoelCreates20 at checkout, or go to bspk.me slash JoelCreates20. Help support my projects by supporting the people who keep my resources stocked. Thanks, Bespoke. Meanwhile, back at camp. That was, I mean, I had derailed once. <laughs> it turns out a stick can derail you. It was like a stick like this, right? No, 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 like a twig. You got a hammer. It was like a tree trunk. The stick had it out for me. I'm pretty sure he said something about my mother. Oh, that was so cool. Whenever we were driving along the road and you were going by, I was like, holy shit. That looks like a real minecart. Uh, I bet it looks awesome. Well, I'm just gonna keep going this way, so why don't you guys go position yourself somewhere in the trees? Kirsten and Damien scouted ahead for interesting locations and potential speedrun areas. Like a spider. Oh, shit. actually scared me at first. You want a lift, G? Really? Yeah. I gave Graydon a ride and then lined up for some flyby shots. Ready? Now that I knew that a branch could derail me, it was important to test any section of track at a lower speed before pushing it faster, just in case I ran into anything that might cause the same problem. And nothing reverses, that's awesome. It does, it does, not, not full speed, but it does. I kinda wanna come down that stretch even faster. All right, here we go. More speed, more power. This section was beautiful, and I got it up to 18 miles an hour. But I still wasn't ready to take it up to the top speed just yet. I got it up to almost 20. What'd you say, holy cow? I can't believe how far the track is. I, I filmed for like 45 seconds, and I still didn't see the other side. Graydon was right. This track was just massive, and I couldn't wait to discover even more. Like our first bridge. We were quickly starting to realize that even when it's freezing cold outside, everything is just more fun when you've got a minecart. Alright Damien, you go hike up ahead and I'll drop her off. Yeah, not really. Just is. You didn't expect it to be so wobbly? Oh yeah, no, it's fun, right? Alright, I'll go get Damien. You wanna ride? Bring it out here again for fun sometimes. <laughs> I know, right? You're hopping on to like a Titanic one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Every night in my dreams, I see you. How about? you are. I'm gonna come down here pretty quick. I'm gonna see if I can hit top speed. All right, here we go. Now, I don't know if you can really tell on camera, but the closer that I got to 25, the more that this thing bounced back and forth and the sketchier it became. But I was just not ready to give up. That was 24. Now I know I can push it a little further. So one more. Think you can get it? 25? I think I can hit it. Oh yeah, I can go, I can go 30. It's just it might crash. I'll just make sure that everything is nice and aligned. Everything seems tight. Everything seems good. Okay, let's go. Top speed time.
26 miles an hour. 26 miles an hour. <laughs> it's cold in this thing. Did you get 25? It was incredible to reach the top speed of a real Minecraft minecart, but we still had so much more to do. For instance, you may have noticed that I make YouTube videos for a living. One of the things I've been trying to do lately is to expand my presence on other social media platforms, which is why occasionally I have to say things like, um, I want you to film a TikTok with Damien. And then I'm gonna pull up and say something Minecrafty, but what, I don't know what. Hey, uh, do you know where the next train is? Oh, I think I see it, never mind. There are endless possibilities when you've got your own mini train station and a real minecart. What would you do? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> Let's see it one more time, one more time. Now at this moment I had no idea, but things were about to get really crazy thanks to that guy Trevor that I mentioned earlier. This is a Minecraft minecart, and it's one of, well, one Oh, watch out. <laughs> wow. I'm sure you have better things to do, but on the off chance you don't, it'd be pretty cool to go on these parallel tracks and have them sit and kind of film me while you, while you go along. Keep all arms, hands, legs, small children, and selfie sticks inside the tree. This was the coolest. I mean, how often do you and your buddies get to chase each other down your own private railroad track. I'll go around and then I'll follow you guys. Riding around the amusement park again, I couldn't help but feel that same giddiness from earlier. And I realized that it wasn't just because I was riding on a minecart, but that my friends and my wife were here sharing the experience with me, and that we were even making new friends in the process. And behind me was a massive trail of unlikely what ifs. What if I had never reached out to Daryl at Little America? And what if he had said no to me coming out here with my contraptions? What if I had never run into that genius battery builder Frank? And what if we never said hello to Trevor? What if he hadn't gone over and above to make our time here so special? What if I didn't have friends and family who were willing to give their time to help me on projects like this? What if I listened to that little thought at the beginning of this project that said, it's just too hard, do something easier. That's what I love about this project, and really any worthwhile adventure. Just like a good minecart ride, if you keep your head up, stay on track, hang on and enjoy the ride, you just might end up smiling in absolute bewilderment at your good fortune. If you want to experience the beautiful track you saw in this video on one of their awesome steam trains, then go check out Little America in Marshall, Wisconsin. I've included a link to their website in the description below. Again, a seriously huge thanks to Daryl, Alex, and Trevor for all of their help. I could not have done this without them. If you want to see more content like this, please consider liking and subscribing as it helps a ton. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.